we we missed the goal in 2023 by like six days but i'm still gonna pat myself on the back yeah the channel pulled a miracle so let's fucking go and i figured we'd commemorate your return to this wonderful land my basement and the new milestone by talking about something a little bit shorter and a little bit funnier than we normally do so oh, it's are we actually be... recording right now are we doing the yeah we're open? recording right now ah yeah, shit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For all those wondering if there's any weird noises in the background, uh, I spilled a drink over my keyboard right before we started, so... It's great. <laughs> the the very, very first thing Steve does when he comes back is basically the equivalent of, oh shit, oh fuck, oh no, my drink, because he spills it all over his ghetto setup. It's great to have you back. I'm sure the fans will be very, very happy that the comedic relief has returned. The clown is back, everybody, trapped in the basement once again. They were all clamoring for my return, at least the patrons were. The tales of your death were greatly exaggerated. Let's, let's talk about some mercenaries that copy the British Museum. It's not grave robbing if they don't have a grave proceeds to load missile launchers with acquisitional intent. Because what's what's funnier than rocking up to someone else's planet and acquiring numerous historical pieces to put on display in your reinforced fire ba er, museum that you totally didn't steal at gunpoint? Um, planting a flag there first. Delivering culture to the savages. Exactly. Today we're talking about Snord's Irregulars, an offshoot of the Wolf's Dragoons. Clanner mechs hailing from Clan Wolf and Papa Soupstock himself that were given this clandestine mission to go around and steal all the fancy shit they could find across the inner sphere. That's, that's pretty much the sum of it. So, they're descended from good old Soupstock himself. You know what that means, Steve? Uh, bring back the Soupstock memes. Indeed, but also, oh. they're hilariously overpowered. Like, the, the plot armor and the good luck around Snord's Irregulars is ridiculous. It's absolutely insane. It's like bad fanfiction in the best possible way. There is no such thing as bad fanfiction. Spoken like a man who's never read any. So source, trust me, bro. Connoisseur of uh, absolutely zero Source, I made it up. <laughs> Haven't played the game, but it's one of those Metal Gear Solid games. Uh, what's your source? I made it the fuck up. God, I want to play that game on stream so bad, but my internet <laughs> shit. Anyways, generic greetings and welcome to Science Insanity, a channel dedicated to bringing my love of sci-fi and all its comedic hilarity to you, the viewer. Along for the ride and back from his long escape from my basement prison is the comedic relief science illiterate co-host and friend Steve. Say hello, content fodder. Hello. Welcome back from your vacation, by the way. I hope you're ready to once again suffer with me. I am I am currently suffering. It, it's not with you right now, but I, I am in fact suffering. <laughs> so let's let's start with who Snord is and why his name is stupid. This is Battletech, so having funny names, stupid, unpronounceable garbage and all of that is extremely common, especially for the clan head menace and I thought it was like a requirement of this universe. It has to almost? Have a stupid name. Okay. Basically, everybody really important that comes after Kerensky has a really stupid name. Or it's just, like, really cringe, like Wolf. Wolf's Dragoons. Clan Wolf. The wolfest wolf to ever wolf. There we go! That's the name of all time. Essentially, Snord's Irregulars were part of Clan... Oh, wait, fuck. No, hang on. I skipped something. <laughs> off to okay, a great so, start, man. Off to a great start, yeah. So, back to the first point, right? Wolf's Dragoons. Right? Do you know anything about them? Have we talked about them at all? Do you remember anything? Uh, we, we might have, but I, I, in fact, do not. Okay, I'm just going to assume we haven't and move on so that you don't have any embarrassment. So, essentially, they were part of the vanguard for the clans. They showed up, like, decades early, and they were meant to rock around the Inner Sphere, kicking ass and taking names, to report back on the state of the military and preparedness of all the great houses and stuff for when the clan heads decided to yeet their entire army directly at Tukiad in, like, 2060, or... 3060, whoops, thousand years off. But before we get into Snord and all his Han Solo-esque glory, shameless shill, because I decided to move it a little bit further back in the video, Steve, better for retention. If you like the video, or Steve's return, I guess, then leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell button, all that stuff, since it really does help for a small channel like this and is greatly appreciated. If you want to support us directly, then check out our Patreon and buy me a coffee or feed Steve to stop him from running away again. Or if you just want to hang out with a small but growing community of fellow Turbo Nerds, we have a Discord. Everything linked in the description below for easy access. And with that said, with the we shamelessness are, out of the with, way... Nope, nope, the shamelessness is not out of the way. If you would like to finance a new keyboard for for me, uh, to be determined if this one's actually broke or not, we also are accepting donations at our PayPal for that. 
Shirley Sai will put it down in the uh, description. I will forget, but it's fine. People will ask about it enough that I'm sure it'll get around to it. On to Snord. Snord was originally one of those Wolf's Dragoons mech warriors, like I said, but was later separated off to form his own mercenary company by orders of Wolf Dragoon leadership. He was supposed to hunt for Star League relics and weapons caches while posing as just another mercenary. The cover story they made might be less of a cover than directly stated. It, it, was, it was probably all fabricated, but knowing the clanners to make the story believable, they fabricated it by just doing it. And they actually had Snord disobey orders during a battle, run off in the middle of a huge fight to go fist fight an art gallery or something, and then run away with a whole bunch of priceless pieces of art during wait, the middle wait, of a battle. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> fight an art gallery. Uh, I, that sounds like one of the plot points in a book I was reading. <laughs> Look, this part of Snord's story is going to come back up a lot. Okay, his whole gimmick is hippity hoppity, your shit is my property. And he just rocks around the galaxy stealing knickknacks and tchotchkes because he can. Mid battle, Snord pissed off to go steal a few very, very valuable art pieces that he intended to keep for himself. As punishment, the Wolf's Dragoons kicked him out on his ass. Alongside a decent chunk of money and a fully armed and operational heavy battle mech, the Archer. Nice severance package, if I do say so myself. But this left Snord pretty down on his luck, stranded on the world of crossing in the Draconis Combine border zone with the Fed Sons. So, mercenary in the Draconis Combine, yikes, pretty fast way to die. But amazingly, Snord didn't kick the bucket, and in fact managed to win himself a potential future through the stupidest, most unlikely dump trucks worth of garbage good luck you have ever seen. So, you okay. see, despite, despite being from the Clanners, right, he was in disguise and had a fake identity, he was a little eccentric and probably very brain damaged, as most clanners are. He was also an amazing gambler. Are you familiar with Star Wars? I assume yes. Uh, no, I've actually never heard of that property before. Um. Okay, well, here's some deep lore about a little-known character called Han Solo, right? Okay. The, his famous ship, the Millennium Falcon, he won that in a game of Sabacc, basically just cards. He, he stole it off someone else by winning a card game. And he ain't got shit on Snord, okay? This man didn't win a ship. He won an entire fucking mercenary company in a game of poker. An entire mercenary company. A whole ass dropship, five other mechs alongside his archer in various states of disrepair, and he had a few aerospace fighters. Absolutely ridiculous that he managed to get away with this, and even more so that he found someone dumb enough to gamble away that much money worth of materiel. To be fair, a guy could have just gone all in on, uh, on first hand and... And uh, they all thought he was bluffing, so everyone called him. <laughs> I, I don't know how to play poker, but pocket aces, I win, I guess. I don't know. He did something like that. He, uh, he went all in with seven deuce offsuit. I have no idea what that means, but I'll assume you said something intelligent or clever. Uh, it's basically the worst starting hand there is. He managed to make all of this work by the pure magic of good luck, and there wasn't much meddling from Clan Wolf and the Wolves Dragoons. The only thing they really did, and brace yourself for these names, the only thing they really did was use the wolf net to alter his uh, ID and change his backstory. And the wolf net, if you're wondering... <laughs> the wolf net? It is a name of all time. And it's essentially a Comstar-esque intelligence network that's embedded itself into, like, all parts of the galaxy and kind of keeps their ears open for any interesting information and intel. And you'd think that they would be relatively ineffective compared to the unbelievable might of Comstar, but no, apparently the Wolfnet is so effective that it can just YOLO change everything about someone's life and erase someone from history and replace them with a new identity and just... It does this for every single time that one of the Wolf Dragoons members go off and do their own thing, or whenever they get new people from the clans or pick new people up or whatever. It's great, man. You gotta love the wolf. They staple that shit on everything. Ah, uh, yes, the Frank's Red Hot reference. So, Snord gets his mercenary unit up and running and is immediately in crippling debt. The biggest creditor to the old company being House Merrick from the Free Worlds League. Do you need a picture of this? They're the purple guys down in the corner next, on the other side of the uh, Capellans. Let me go to, uh... I mean, yeah, yes, I do vaguely remember it, but... Okay, well, I'm not prepared with too many pictures because Snord doesn't Outstanding. really... Outstanding, I'm good then. Yeah, okay, Snord doesn't really have too many uh, images about him, it's just like a picture of his face. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. So, the Free okay. Worlds League. We haven't done an episode on them, they'll be coming eventually. 
but the Free Worlds League is almost as bad as the Capellans when it comes to their future being questionable. The difference is though, while the Capellans are at all times under threat of and should probably have been totally conquered out of the setting, the Free Worlds League is just constantly exploding. The Civil War is their national pastime. So the Free Worlds League had managed to not explode for long enough to respond to the threat of the Lyrian Commonwealth. Three years? Managed to not explode for long enough? Is, or is three years too long? We're talking more like six months or? I don't know, it depends. It's not directly stated oh. and it varies. Sometimes it'll be years, but that's because a war is going on for years. Sometimes it'll only be a few months because they deal with whatever the threat is fast enough that they can go back to trying to kill each other. Anyways, so they, they, they didn't explode for long enough to respond to a threat from the Lyrian Commonwealth. Steiner, the colossally wealthy, richer than God, bigger industry than anything you could imagine nations sitting to their north, and it also means that Steiner's military is absolutely disgustingly powerful. And if it ever really gets rolling, it's like someone airdropped a steamroller onto you. Extremely impractical, very, very poorly thought out and kind of stupid, but oh my god will it hurt when it hits, and if they miss, it's fine. They have like 800 other planes ready to drop more steamrollers on you. They got 800 more already in the air, waiting in case that one misses. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's... that's whatever the, the Star Wars <laughs> meme is, 800,000 more units are already on the way, or 8 million more units, whatever it is. Oh, for the clones, yeah, whatever. As such, the Free Worlds League was absolutely freaking out, and they were recruiting every mercenary possible, throwing more money at the problem than probably would be financially stable for their state. Snord's irregulars were no different taking a one-year contract to fight for House Merrick and defend the Free Worlds League from an incoming Lyran invasion. Serving on the world of Rochelle, they faced the sledgehammer of a Lyran invasion force. The fighting was miserably brutal and drawn out, meaning that the engagements would last for days at a time of constant fighting. Entire armies would grind each other down across cities, mountains, valleys, whatever, and the attrition rates were unimaginably atrocious. The Free Worlds League military proper suffered horrific casualties, while most of the mercenaries they employed suffered attrition rates as high as 70 or 80%, which is just, it's mind-numbing. Three quarters were dead or demecked pretty much immediately on contact. Not snored, though. Never snored. He had actually managed to not only preserve his forces during this fighting, but somehow managed to actually gain combat strength by salvaging enemy and sometimes friendly mechs because lol, it's not grave robbing if they never had a grave. Snord's Irregulars actually grew three sizes that battle. Good old, good old Grinch reference. They also sniped other mech warriors from destroyed or severely attrited units. If someone had lost like 80% of their mercenary force, Snord would basically rock up and offer them a job. And if they refused, well, Sucks to suck. Have fun fighting the next wave alone, losers. Uh, I... <laughs> God, man, I am I am so wired right now, like you have no idea. I'm on my meds today, and holy shit, I'm feeling real uh, good. Yeah, sigh on the meds. It's Dude, over, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm overdosed as well. I took three pills instead of my usual two. I, I worded that really weird. I am fine. I'm not <laughs> overdosing. It's okay. If you don't get a video next week, <laughs> you'll know why. <laughs> the, there might have been a problem. When the fighting was actually concluding, when the Lyrans had finally been beaten back and the tidal wave of men, metal, and arti ar artillery shells was finally finished sweeping over the world of Rochelle, the Free Worlds League and House Merrick did the thing. They did the singular thing that every unimaginably void-brained leader does when they've finished a battle using mercenary forces. Want to take a wild guess what it is, Steve? Uh, no. Wow, okay, I had like a few lines here that was like, let Steve guess, Steve waffle, and then respond, but that's fine, we can cut that part out. The battle is over, the contracts are expiring, House Merrick looked at all of these mercenaries that had spent pretty much years just fighting and dying on this shithole of a planet with unbelievable attrition rates, and collecting whatever they could in salvage just to keep going, and decided not only to not pay the mercenaries, but also to try and confiscate all of their looted weapons and salvaged mechs to try and rebuild their own military. So what do you think happened from here, Steve? I, I think there was another uh, huge, huge battle, and uh, many more people died um, on the side without plot armor. Correct. 
Normally, you see, like, Comstar's Mercenary Review Board, the thing that, like, governs all the mercenary contracts to stop people from being scammed or scamming others, would be called in to arbitrate the deal. If there was a loophole, then they would let Merrick take some of the stuff and leave a decent chunk for the mercenaries. If there wasn't any error in the contract and Merrick was lying, Comstar would make the mercenaries give, like, a token show of support and give stuff back just to stop a conflict. Basically, every time Comstar's Mercenary Review Board steps in, nobody walks away happy. It's a compromise that pisses off everybody. Well, just how it should be. Uh, the, so the mercenaries were like, absolutely not. And Snord got snorting, as he does, and rolled the dice on yet another insane gamble. He riled up, started, and led a mass mercenary revolt on the planet. The Free Worlds League military tried to fight them and keep them penned in, but the mercs just blasted through them on pretty much every occasion. So anyway, I started blasting. Pretty much, yeah, they just opened fire. I mean, they were, like, surrounded because they maneuvered their forces around the mercenaries first, good old turkey shoot style. But all that means is you can pick any direction, fire, and still hit your enemy. So joke's on you, idiot. So during the escape, like I was saying, they managed to fight to a number of spaceports. Many of the mercs who fought for the Free Worlds League just yoloing out of there and joining up with Steiner and the Lyran Commonwealth instead because haha, fuck you, and a huge goof from the Free Worlds League. Snord, however, was very busy during this battle. Not only did he manage to totally, definitely not shoot in the back and kill the old commander that was working with him of McKinney's Manglers, what the company was named before Snord, assuming full and uncontested control of the unit, but he also managed to steal more shit as they escaped. I imagine his battle mech just like running through an art gallery and picking up a statue as he ran to the spaceport, just because he could. So not only did they escape with a bunch of loot, but also managed to get rid of the only person that could challenge him for control. This ridiculous show of good luck and bold action impressed the Archon of House Steiner, Katrina, so much that she offered to hire them immediately. Both because they were clearly good mercs, but also because it was really funny and it would fuck with Merrick after the Lyrans lost their invasion, so petty spite is the best motivator out of them all. The contract was really weird, though. Snord dragged out the negotiations forever and asked for extremely weird terms. Low pay and low salvage rights from the contracts, but Snord's irregulars got to pick and choose their missions, and they also got a permanent base supplied by the Lyrans. A permanent military base to use as their outfit headquarters on a border world. The reason he asked for this is twofold. One, because Snord wanted to go treasure hunting, so having a static location to build his mini-museum of ill-gotten gains was, you know, pretty good. But secondly, because somehow, again, he's a clanner, so they have knowledge of where a lot of this old SLDF stuff is, but he also picked a location that had a massive Star League base just buried underneath it. Nobody really knew it was there, and it had a whole bunch of useful stuff for their mercenary outfit, from technology to equipment to tools to weapons, which is where Snord's regulars started getting a little bit of plot armor garbage, because they're one of the few forces in all of the Inner Sphere... Just a little bit. Oh, dude, believe me, it's gonna get so much worse. Like, you, you have no idea. This Star League base basically kicked off Snord's irregulars' rise to fame, because they had a lot of SLDF lost tech in there, including some very rare mechs that pretty much nobody outside of Comstar had in the Inner Sphere. And these were very powerful, very effective, let them punch way above their weight, and consistently outperform their enemies, which, you know, that's a huge advantage. And now, let's, let's talk a little bit about those adventures. Like, like, people talk about plot armor all the time, and they're like, oh, he didn't die from, like, a blaster bolt to the gut or whatever from Star Wars. But no, 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 this is unashamed favoritism right here. This is the golden age of Warhammer 40k blueberries and all the bullshit that went along with that. You don't get it, but a lot of the people watching will. One of the engagements against the Free Worlds League forces, Snord accepted the contract both to fuck with the FWL and to hunt for precious paintings that the locals had hidden away to protect them from the fighting. Landing on the world, they were significantly off their drop coordinates, which is usually a really bad thing in Battletech, because you could be dropped in the middle of a lake, or in the middle of an enemy force, or just so far away that you're never going to be able to get in a position to actually do something productive. Were they dropped in the middle of a museum? Oh, oh it gets better. They were dropped pretty much immediately off of an FWL supply depot. 
destroying it, stealing all of the shit that they could, and marching on happily after crippling all of the Free Worlds League forces in the area, which was the entire point of their contract. They then, stumbling forward, chasing the intel they had on these paintings, found the Command HQ for the entire region and similarly introduced them to copious amounts of death, almost by accident. They then strolled jauntily and merrily through some more Free Worlds League-held cities, just casually blowing things up and stealing shit, until they finished their search for the lost art, picking it up and yeeting themselves out of there on their transport. Snord had managed to sprint out of there with very little damage, mechs' arms entirely full of priceless artwork, jewels, and all kinds of other shit that they could steal, and all the while, almost by accident, his actions had completely crippled the Free Worlds League forces in the region, reducing what was supposed to be a, like an eight-month-long campaign of hard grinding fighting to a two-month stomp where the, Lyr the Lyrans basically just marched across the entire battlefield. He accidentally crippled an army while acting like a loot goblin and crawling around in the dirt and rubble. I think that's pretty pretty powerful. Oh, dude, it's gonna get better. I've got two more examples. Oh, like it just it, it just it goes no, it goes. No shot, it gets worse than this. No way, dude. It's gonna be so good. So the next time Snord went out a snorting, they hit the world of oh, Wing. Straight strange no. strange name Bro, I know. But... Bro did not just say that. It's fine. They were only on this world because there was a contract available and they were here to steal shit. This time, a whole ass library that they were coming to steal. Once they landed, they immediately fucked off and abandoned the Lyran forces and followed intercepted Free Worlds League communications, hinting at a transport inbound to extract their real target. And this was a huge collection of incredibly valuable and culturally important books, like pretty much a whole ass library, right? Leaving their designated post, Snord's Irregulars managed to slip past the front lines mid-battle and intercept this transport, collecting said library and presumably running off with one mech holding each corner of it as they disappeared into the forest. The Lyrans assumed Snord and his mercs were dead and pressed on with the assault anyways. But once again, Lady Luck is playing Snord's flute like her life depends on it, because apparently the Free Worlds League absolutely flipped out when they learned that Snord's irregulars had penetrated their lines. Uh, okay. I am struggling to figure out where Shift goes on this keyboard, man. I am... it... we are, we are down bad. <laughs> I don't... I don't think that term means what you think it means, Steve. Oh, I know exactly what it means, but... <laughs> you're, you're, you're down bad for the shift key on your keyboard, cool. Nope, that does not depress into the keyboard, okay. The Free Worlds League thought Snord was about to do it to him again, and obliterate their entire command infrastructure and supply lines. Where he was sighted and the intel that they had on the uh, Irregulars' movements meant that the Free Worlds League thought he was about to run into their command and supply lines again. So they panicked and mobilized a full half of the entire front line of this battle to chase down and destroy them. Half of the entire Free Worlds League army just up and broke, abandoned defensive positions, and scattered haphazardly as they tried to chase down this single group of mercenaries. When the Lyrans eventually caught up to them and figured out what was going on, they found Snord's Irregulars pinned down in a ravine, presumably still holding that fucking library they stole worth of books, and they showed up to the rescue of these mercs. The Lyrans once again stomped the battle in record time with minimal losses. Snord's Irregulars, they'd taken plenty of damage, but not crippling, and Archon Katrina decided that when she looked at all of the information available, that she would invite them back to rest and recuperate for a while in the aftermath, and pin a medal on Snord for incredibly heroic actions that once again led to the Lyran's victory. He literally deserted his post and fucked off to go steal a textbook, and yet somehow managed to win a Medal of Honor. Jesus, man, and it just goes. Round three of Snord's Bizarre Snord Venture. A raid on a jungle world to destroy an aerospace fighter factory set up by the Free Worlds League. Snord didn't care, like at all. Not a single iota. He was only there to steal an ancient Star League era dropship. A dropship full of musical instruments and sheet music from like 500 years ago. Of course. 
the man really doesn't discriminate. He just he wants all the stuff. He's gonna he's gonna touch all up everywhere. And there's nothing anyone can do to stop him. If he sees something he wants, he's just gonna fucking yoink it. You see that? Yeah, that's mine now. <laughs> <laughs> this is yours? You made that? No, this is mine. I made that. When the mercs landed on the world alongside the Lyran units, they once again completely just broke off to go do what they wanted and find this crashed dropship full of rusted trombones and rotten paper or whatever the fuck else there was in there. They had tromboners on there, no way. Yeah, dude, huge find. So, apparently, apparently, once again, apparently. Lady Luck coming in to just do whatever Snord wants, the crashed dropship they were hunting just so happened, just so fucking happened, to be buried underneath the command and control headquarters of the planet for the Free Worlds League. So they did it again, lads. He once again accidentally won the day for the Lyrans by completely blowing open the door and letting them just do whatever they wanted by complete accident. They really gotta start uh, picking their, their headquarters better, man. All of the information about this unit is, is just like this, by the way. It doesn't change. All of it? Oh. oh. Yeah, dude, Snord is like the Battletech version of Mr. Bean. He looks so unassuming and it seems so innocent. And from the outside, you're like, this, this is a clown fiesta. But his level of power is beyond our understanding. Things had to go wrong for old Snord. He couldn't keep getting away with it forever, and Janus Merrick, Janus Merrick, whatever, of the Free Worlds League was just done with his shit. While Snord's regulars were off fighting the Free Worlds League again, and probably stealing dinosaur bones or something, Janus Merrick organized and <laughs> sent, a ra <laughs> sent a raid to their base world with the express mission to steal all of the shit that Snord had dutifully uncovered in his archaeological expeditions. The result of this was that they were rendered almost bankrupt from the amount of damage and lost assets. However, Katrina Steiner gave them not only an advance on pay, but also a bunch of resources, like a whole ass jump ship. Very rare, I might add. Those are the giant FTL things that nobody knows how to make anymore because they lost the technology. So this is a huge deal. And basically told Snord, okay, you've got the stamp of approval, go absolutely nuts and have fun. And in response, Snord's Snordtastic raids continued, this time targeting the palace world of the big man Merrick himself. It was like, literally, the definition of, you messed with my home, I'm gonna come and burn down yours. And that's exactly what they did. Raiding the planet and kicking down the doors of the guy's palace, killing all of his guards and staff, I think it was called the Rainbow Legion or the Rainbow Guard or whatever, which is really funny. Maybe if they had, like, a more menacing name, they wouldn't have been, uh, rolled over so so easily. They they only cared about the name on the back of the jersey, not the name on the front, so... <laughs> they, they simply didn't care about it. It gets, it gets worse for the good old Free Worlds League, though. You see, they didn't capture the big man himself. He was, like, 35 planets farther away in the core of the Free Worlds League itself, doing government things and being influential and all that. But... Not only did they presumably steal everything that wasn't nailed to the ground and then destroy everything that was, they also yoinked the cousin of Janus Merrick himself. They stole one of his family members to use his ransom. They were just like, you know what? This is convenient. Yoink! And just left. On the return trip, when they were trying to escape, the Free Worlds League forces were like, ah, I got it. Big brain. He moves unpredictably. He's going to, like, disappear somewhere and reappear in a convenient area to get picked up, and he's going to, like, somehow get behind us again. So they position their forces really intelligently to catch these mercs wherever they tried to escape from. And on paper, that looked like a brilliant idea. Except Snord went, no, and turned around and instead marched directly deeper into Free Worlds League territory through multiple cities while they continued to blow things up and steal wherever they could when they passed by a museum or an art gallery. Bro simply said, nah, I ain't doing all that. Snord had been right and truly pissed off. After this one concluded, he basically went on like a six year long rampage, constantly hitting every Free Worlds League target they could find, taking back as many of the artifacts as he could, and doing as much as possible to humiliate and embarrass Janus Merrick and the Free Worlds League. And there's one case. Basically, they set up an entire fortress. They baited this planet to try to kill Snord once and for all. Okay. So what they did was they picked a veritable fortress world. There was this peninsula surrounded by deep stormy waters, it was very narrow, very rocky, extremely heavily fortified, 
basically impossible to get into or out of without running an absolute hell gauntlet of lasers and missiles, gunfire, mines, all that, right? Okay. But instead of, oh, I don't know, walking in and dying, Snor did something really, really funny and actually kind of intelligent. You want to take a wild guess what it was? Did he simply walk in and live? Yes. Yes, he did. Outstanding. Do you want to know where he walked in from, though? Uh, uh, behind him. Yes. He outflanked the entire peninsula. <laughs> he landed on a landmass opposite the peninsula, and Snord became a submarine as he walked his mechs across the ocean floor to emerge behind the defenders on the vulnerable flank stealing everything, butchering them, and for good measure, blowing up a whole bunch of free Worlds League iconography, and then leaving. Hey, simply built different. He's too powerful. Steve, this man is too powerful. And and that's that's enough of his bullshittery, by the way. I just, I, I can't... Is that enough of his bullshittery? I, I, think, I think I might need a couple more examples. Dude, we are like maybe 20% of the way through. Oh, God. This is like maybe this is like maybe a quarter of all of the garbage that Snort has gotten up to. Like he just he's he's on he's on an adventure, man. This is like a D&D campaign. He's just doing his thing. He's got plot armor. Nothing can stop him. When the big bad guy shows up, he just puts a bag of holding inside another bag of holding and then the universe explodes. There's there's too much to go over. We'd be here for like 6 hours trying to cover it all. So instead, let's let's talk about some funny other anecdotes before we end off. There is a commissar that tags along with Snord. He was sent there from Clan Wolf or the Wolf's Dragoon, something like that, right? And basically, he's there to kill Snord if he ever talks about Clan Wolf or the Dragoon's real mission, ever lets any information slip. Snord was so happy to be off doing his thing that he barely ever even mentioned the Wolf's Dragoons or anything like that. People figured he was just lying about ever being a part of them and they just kind of ignored whenever it was brought up. If people were just like, okay, whatever, he's talking out of his ass, who cares? And they just moved on. And I would argue he probably forgot he was ever part of it. When the clan invasion happened, Snord's daughter, Rhonda Snord, fought the clans. Successfully what a, what using... What a name. <laughs> Dude, it's great. Successfully using a shitload of recovered Star League tech to fight on a relatively even footing and inflicting huge losses on the clans after rejecting their return call and choosing to side with the Inner Sphere instead. The original Snord, right, the first one that we've been talking about for the most part, Rhonda Snord does play a decent part, but for the most part it's this original guy, right? He finally okay. had Lady Luck call for her due, since eventually, like, he just couldn't keep up with it anymore, and he had a heart attack and fucking died. Understandable. Have a nice day, I guess. I mean, he he didn't he didn't die. He he died for a few minutes before they brought him back. But the heart attack was. <laughs> she said, "I ain't done with you yet." <laughs> the the heart attack was so massive and it did so much damage to his body that it did cripple him. And he spent most of the rest of his life doing intel work for the mercenary company and coordinating the search for more loot and stuff. Basically, becoming like eyes in the sky intelligence agent, that kind of thing. His daughter took over the actual mech warrior stuff, but yeah, the motherfucker literally kicked it and came back because he was like, no, I have more stuff to steal. I can't go yet. I need more loot. I'm not <laughs> done here. Send me back. <laughs> <laughs> and for the most part, that's pretty much where the video is over because the only other thing I could do is continue to waffle on about the absolute insanity of the stuff he does. So, Snord's are regulars. The Bounty Hunter might be more my speed in terms of entertainment and stuff, since a sadistic, petty murderer that acts like a child is amusing to me, but Snord's Irregulars definitely carry that clown fiesta energy where you just... You, you have to laugh and cry at the same time in confusion and humor, because it's just so ridiculous. Any final thoughts, Steve? No, I, I, I have no thoughts. I'm back in the basement. All my thoughts have escaped me. Head empty. I'm just thinking about when my next meal will be. Uh, I don't know. Depends on what's when the next patron joins the $5 tier. And speaking uh, of, ha <laughs> ha, what an amazing segue. We totally didn't coordinate that. We actually didn't. We just share one of the singular brain cells between us. So to all of our patrons, wonderful support. Thank you very much. It goes a long way on the back end. And to all the members of the $5 tier, a special thank you. 
David G, Augie, Eleven Bravo Crunchy, Terry Higgins, Pedro Munoz, David G, The Other One, Silencer, Vox Apollyon, Phoenix, BT Legend, Electro Boy Eleven, Logan Maynard, Mickey, David Armon, Cree Dome, Robin Stop, It, Fenrir Striker, Tachi Takane, He's Deb, Pixie, Virtus, Fabric 445, Anchovy Bob, Mini Crustacean, Charles the Snap, Polly, Eric Jones, Joseph Holiday, Zombie the Zerker, David B, Sweet B, Rastro, Le Butcher, Stabby Taco, Nomquam, Brian Hall, John, Joshua J, The Hay Folk, Unit Zero, Tarly Bob, Kiwi Warrior, Julia Kaczynski, Douglas Jerema, Jer I'm just calling you Jerma, Douglas Jerma, Jason Vigo, Screaming Stuka, great name, by the way. Thank you very much to all of our patrons and to the new guys. Welcome aboard. You are appreciated. Anything else to say before we end off, Steve? Why do I have three E's?